Our first guest is the first voice I hear when I wake up that isn't screaming, Daddy, make me pancakes. You can hear him every morning like I do on Sirius XM and read his innermost thoughts. In this book, Howard Stern Comes Again. Please welcome the pride of Long Island, Howard Stern. <laughs> Enthusiasm in this you city. Know, uh, for your... this, as you said, LA is all a buzz. It's great. I live in New York. I'm, yeah. I'm a hermit, as you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when I come out here, like every 15, 20 years, uh -huh. uh, the first they think there's a giant praying mantis in town. Uh -huh. But then there I am, and people get excited they when do. I'm here. As you are excited. <laughs> I am excited. I'm excited. I'm very excited. For those of you. For those of you who don't know, Jimmy is my dear friend. Mm -hmm. We even go on vacation occasionally together. Yes, We that have is a true. very close relationship. I'm almost family. Yes, yes. I'm not quite family because if you're family, then you get a job here. <laughs> I, I, We'd be I mean, happy I, to take you on. I'm backstage and I'm walking around the halls <laughs> and you run into cousin Bertha, and uh. <laughs> Uncle Cleto, you know, Aunt Flippy. And you know, you, you see these people, and, and these people, I guess, are entitled to jobs. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. I don't know how you do it. You don't yeah. have any family members working at the show. Well, with your show, it's like I said, it's like with people with the Native Americans. You know, <laughs> in, well, Native American. If you can prove you're a Native American, uh -huh. you get to own one of those casinos. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Around here, if you can prove you're Jimmy's relative, <laughs> you get a job. Yeah, you're a member of my tribe. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But I did, um, I did, before we talk about anything uh, beside my book, yeah, and Sirius yeah, XM, yeah. I wanted to tell you how much I love you. I love you, too. And I'm going to sing you a song. <laughs> oh, no, really? <laughs> Should I? Should I? Uh... I didn't even rehearse with the band. This is totally spontaneous. Oh, all right. The only song I know the lyrics to somewhat. Uh -huh. You know the Carpenters. Um, Why? Close to you. What? Yes, I do. Why do birds? <laughs> What's with you guys? <laughs> it's a wedding song. <laughs> Why do birds suddenly appear? Every time Jimmy's near, <laughs> just like me, they long to be close to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> On the day that you were born, the angels from the banana and decided to create a dream come true. So they sprinkled fairy dust among your little head and took his holy too. Look how uncomfortable you are. I know, yeah, I'm very uncomfortable, yeah. Like, you didn't even move. Sit <laughs> We are very close. <laughs> I didn't know we were that, I wouldn't know we were carpenters close. Don't I, you think that's... we're that close? You know, I wrote this book, Howard You wrote started. something beautiful about me in the book. Thank you very much. I did. I, it I... really touched me, honestly. But, but uh, thank you for saying that, but the, um, the book is near and dear to me, and it's uh, available for Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but regardless of that, I wrote something beautiful about Jimmy. Jimmy is always very supportive of my career, and he always sends me a note whenever I do a show that he thinks is particularly good. But the book got me into trouble because, you know, everyone said to me, who is your favorite interview of all time? Right. And so, you know, listen, who knows who's my favorite interview? But I, I put some thought to it. I said, oh, Conan O'Brien, we had a particularly good interview. Mm -hmm. Well, this has lit a fire under everyone's head. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jimmy, you dropped snide remarks. Why don't you go to your good friend Conan? Or <laughs> David Spade was on my show. He goes, oh, uh, I guess I'm not good enough to be your favorite interview. So it's, it's sort of weird, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm pleased with the book, and I got a chance to you tell You should people, be pleased with the book. I am pleased because with it. Because so. it is, a, I think, a written record of what a great interviewer you are. Well, it you is... know, I've had so many great guests and so many profound moments on the show. Since we went to Sirius XM, I've been able to do some long-form interviews. It's a different kind of format than we had on regular radio. And it's really enabled me to go out there and ask some, um, some questions that I'm curious about. I, I couldn't imagine when I was a little boy dreaming about being on the radio that one day I'd get to sit with Paul McCartney or Madonna or with you or with this one or that one, you know, Letterman. And so getting that opportunity and to sit there sometimes for an hour and an hour and a half, and it's like Chinese water torture for these people. No, it's you not. You keep them in the chair long enough and they break down and they open up yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it is. You know what it is, I think, is that your questions are questions oftentimes not only have you never been asked, but there are things you hadn't thought about before. And sometimes, like when you interview me, I'll feel like, you're like oh, yeah, yeah, I never really considered that before. And people become, people like talking about themselves. They become so comfortable, they open up. And I was speaking to Adam Levine about this. Well, we were on your show on Monday. He said when he walks out of the studio sometimes, he goes, oh, no, what did I say? And he starts going back through everything he said. Well, the thing that happened for me was, um, uh, really, I was in psychotherapy, and I talk about it in the book, and I'm a big proponent of it. And I started to think about how much I liked being listened to when I'm sitting in the chair with a psychiatrist. And I said, you know, I really have to change my approach because it might be really nice for people to be really heard. And I have a format. You know when you're interviewing people, sometimes it must be frustrating because you get a five-minute block right. to try to make something happen, and it's all compressed. With radio, what is so beautiful about it is if we decide to talk for an hour, an hour and a half, uh, you know, I, I mean, I had Demi Moore on today, and we were talking about the movie Ghost, which I'm obsessed with. I wanted to hear about that in her life. And so we could have this long-form conversation, and it's just a lot is allowed to happen in that kind of One of my frame. favorite things that happens on the show, and you know, I listen every morning, is when the interview ends, and then you say goodbye to the guest, and then it winds up going another 45 minutes. <laughs> That's the technique. <laughs> but that works. It works. <laughs> like, how can it be over and then continue for that long? I don't long? know what happens. When you tell people it's over, they forget. <laughs> and, they, and then all of a sudden, they get even more real. So you do that on purpose? Absolutely. Really? Everything I do on that show is on purpose. Everything is on purpose. No, I don't, I don't wing many things. But saying to someone, hey, this was a great interview. Thank you for coming in. And one more thing. And it is the greatest interview technique, because then it's over. Now we're just having fun. Mm -hmm. The interview part is over. I feel like you shouldn't have revealed this. Uh, it's all right. No one is listening, as you know. <laughs> no one's there. No one's watching. There's three people asleep <laughs> over there. You Where's my wife? Oh, your wonderful wife, Beth, is here. You know, you got to hear this. Um, again, uh, Jimmy and I were just in Tennessee. We went on vacation together. Yes, yes. And uh, Jimmy, you know, Jimmy's not very different off the air. He sits there like this. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what he's on. It's none of your business. But he sits there like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to have a conversation with him. I go, Jimmy, I said, this is true, because he really is out of it. You guys know. No, because you like to relax. You're uh -huh. a talk show host. And I see when you're, when you're off the air, you're like... <laughs> like, Jimmy, wake up. Uh, you're a lot of fun. Thank you. But uh, <laughs> I really enjoy this guy. But I'm talking to Jimmy, and I said, you know, it's embarrassing. I have asked my wife to remarry me. Right. We've been to, we got married... Um, 11 years ago. 11, right? thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. 11 years ago. <laughs> but we've been together like 20-something years. And I said to Jimmy, watch this. We're, we're having dinner. And I said, watch this. I'm going to say to my wife, I want to remarry you. I want to propose, and I'm going to say, marry me again. She always says no. Because she thinks it's jinxed if you get married again. But it's oh. so great. I love the proposal. So we're at a table with about 10 people, and Jimmy's out of it. And... <laughs> Nine people. Right. <laughs> Nine people. You know, ABC doesn't like him to talk about it, but read the old Rolling Stone. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Good move. Almost lost your job. <laughs> Uncle Sidney over there would have been out without work. But, uh, but it's so great. When I propose to my wife, she gets embarrassed, and she just... Honey, come up here. I want to propose. Yeah. Honey, come up here. Oh, so great.
darling. You know, you have given me the best years of my life. I love you so much. You do so much for animal rescue. You know how I feel about you. I'm going to say to you now, in front of all of my best friends, my sweet love, will you marry me again? Yes. Yes! Beautiful. There you go. That's a little interrupt. All right. Howard Stern is here. We'll be right back. <laughs> I wanted to start it because Howard Stern is here. This is his book, Howard Stern Comes Again, the Howard Stern Show on Sirius XM Radio. Doing it all. You haven't, uh, you know, you haven't been here for more than 20 years. The last time. In, in LA, you mean? In L.A. doing your show, the last time, I think, was 1986. Right. According to Gary. This week you've had, let me just list. You mentioned uh, that we'd had Adam Levine. You had Jennifer Aniston, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Robert Downey Jr. this week, Snoop Dogg, Seth Rogen, Demi Moore, Green Day. Yes, the whole idea was that all of these people, including you, were gracious enough to welcome me to L.A. Yes. And so what says L.A. more than celebrities and weed? So, uh... <laughs> Your staff has gone crazy. My staff has gone crazy. Yeah. So we had this fabulous lineup on Monday. Governor uh, Schwarzenegger came in and welcomed us to L.A. You were there for that. Adam sang a song. Uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. was eloquent. Jennifer Aniston, her first appearance on the show. Yes. And then Tuesday, Snoop Dogg and Seth Rogen came in, who are pot experts, and got one of my guys high. It was yes. very beautiful. J.D. got high on the show yes. for the first time in his life. Right. I was going to invite you to that show, but I know ABC will fire you. <laughs> he really is an expert. <laughs> Tell him. What are you, uh, are you allowed to talk about that? It's legal now, right? <laughs> It is legal now, yes. Things tell, are different. Lie to everyone and tell them you don't smoke marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done, I've never smoked pot my whole I, life. I think yeah. you would like it. <laughs> Thank you, uh, really. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you know who was on the show the last time you were here? I'm changing the subject. I don't know. Who was on the show here last time I was well, here? On, on my, your show. On last my time. show in yeah. 1986? Yeah. I don't, I mean. Uh... It, was, it was Dick Buckus. Oh. And the lady who did the voice of the squirrel in Rocky and Bullwinkle. Her, her name was June Foray. June Foray, died. yes. It, that's a funny story, actually. <laughs> now that you bring it, it brings me back to my memory. June Foray was this lovely woman, and she had this great gig. Like you said, she was the voice of Rocket J. Squirrel on Rocky and Bullwinkle. And she was the voice also of Natasha, who was uh, the bad guy on, the, on, this, mm -hmm. on this cartoon. What a great gig. Just doing a dopey voice on a cartoon, and they pay you like a fortune. Yeah. This woman does not want to jeopardize her gig, but on the other hand, she just once in her life wanted people to know that she was the voice behind Rocky the Squirrel. So we wrote her a script, and Dick Buckus was sitting there, the legendary football player. And we wrote her a script, and we didn't show it to her ahead of time. <laughs> of course not. No. And we said, <laughs> you'll play Rocky the Squirrel, and you're going to seduce Jessica Hahn, who at the time was uh, very famous, uh, you know, we know. Right. And Dick Buckus was also going to try to have sex with Rocket J. Squirrel and Jessica Hahn, and it was going to be a threesome. It was a disgusting, degenerate script. <laughs> well, we get on the air, we throw it in front of her, and she goes, oh, uh, you know, Jessica Hahn, I want to, you know, and she's describing all these sexual positions and everything else. A day late, we, we're airing this thing like crazy. It's the greatest thing that ever happened. The real voice of Rocky the Squirrel, Dick Buckus, Jessica Hahn, three-way, whole thing. Calls up about three days later. Calls my producer crying. You, got, you can't air that again. They're going to fire me. It's the worst thing that ever happened. Promise me you'll never air it. Now, you know me. <laughs> I was like, it's tough luck. But no, no, I was a nice guy. She was a nice woman. Uh -huh. I took it right off the air. I, I, was, I was a good guy. And uh, now she recently died, and God, we're playing the hell out of it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, guys. It's not like she's going to lose the gig. Now it's legendary. It is legendary. Yes, ah, the good old days. <laughs> Those were the good old Those days. Those were the good do old days. Do you feel now, do you, do you take any satisfaction in knowing that the last time you were here, you were this malcontent, outsider, um, borderline pornographer, right. um, filth merchant, really? First of all, I resent what you said, borderline pornographer. I was a pornographer. <laughs> no, I... And now you are, liter you are the toast of the town. When I was on re regular radio, the idea of dealing with sexual topics was so taboo. The religious right was after me. The federal government was fining me millions of dollars for my broadcast. 
Talking about sex titillated me so much because I just love poking my finger in the eye of authority. So it wasn't so much about sex. It was more about, are we really being serious about this? The government, this is what they're worried about? Yeah. Whether or not Jessica Hahn and Dick Buckus have a three-way with a squirrel? <laughs> I mean, I think we're all, we're all adults here. So this was fabulous. When I got to satellite radio, they don't care what I do. Yeah. There's no prison guard. All the inmates are running the show. You can do whatever you want. And so sex is a ridiculous thing to sit there and concentrate on. Not that we don't occasionally, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, we can get raunchy. It, it's, yeah, the show is yeah. not as, interestingly, not as focused on that as it was back then. Now because that it's, it's not as much fun. You don't have religious groups coming after you and chasing you in the streets. So, so that's what you would like, the religious groups to come after you and chase you in the streets. I believe, no, you know what it is? I'm enjoying my time at Satellite so much, I knew I had to get off regular radio. It would have been the end of my career. They were editing my show. I was under tremendous pressure uh, not to get fined again by the government. And so when Satellite offered me this opportunity, it really was a godsend because I wasn't interested in quitting my career. And Satellite has opened up a world where that's why I celebrate this book because uh, Satellite's been so great and the interviews have been great. And we've, we've actually managed to not only expand the show in directions I never thought we could go, but it's actually fun. The Donald Trump stuff is just amazing. I mean, it, throughout yes. the book, it'll say, and now a word from our president. Well, Jimmy, I never would have imagined that when, when, when Trump actually started to win, uh, I never would have imagined that I'd see newscasters quoting my show like yeah. it was the Bible. It was just so weird, yeah. you know? And they were just bringing up my name in the debates and all this other stuff. And it was kind of surreal. And then I said to myself, well, maybe I'm sort of a journalist, you know? It, journalism comes in strange places because I had all this wealth of material with yeah. Donald Trump, who, by the way, was the best radio guest ever because he would just say things that no one on the planet would say. And he's still, uh, he's and still, he's still doing saying that. it. Yeah. 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 And so the book. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah. I, it's a, a thrill to have you here. Great know, fun. Did you did you have did you have fun on this trip to LA? Uh, well, be quiet, Eric, or I'll come up there. <laughs> <laughs> Eric had okay. lunch at 7-Eleven today. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I I had a great time in LA. Everyone has been gracious. Thank you for that. That is and, remarkable. Uh, you had a great time. And tune in to Sirius XM. And buy the book. And the Christmas book. buy the book and congratulations. There you go on your remarriage to back. Howard Stern, everybody. Howard Stern comes again. We'll be right back with Aaron Paul. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. An evil wizard has trapped me inside this YouTube video. Click subscribe to help me escape.